Namaskar, greetings to all of you. I am grateful to be able to connect with you again through this medium, this Facebook. I hope that I slowly get better at it. I was taking a few days uh, to reflect and uh, to go into, into silence and understand what was happening, what is happening around me. And, uh, and I got to the point that I needed to, to reconnect with you and to tell you that how important this mission is, how important you are all to, to me and to Dr. Naram. And he is uh, definitely watching over all of us. I got many, many phone calls. I received many emails and I received many text messages. And they were, uh, many of them were from loving people like yourselves, from wonderful words of encouragement. But some of them, most of them also had this question that what to do with this corona virus the fear that i sensed the fear that i that i connected to that everyone was so frightened and everyone was so um sort of uh, given up hope as if something is coming at them and there is no way uh running away from it was so grand and so great that i said i should pull myself together today and uh, come sit in front of this camera and relay the message to you. About a day or two before Dr. Naram's passing, we were talking on the phone and he, we were talking about the fear, this fear that affects us on so many different levels, on our uh, emotional, mental, physical, and even financial level. On our social level, we're not able to, you know, get together, we're not able to attend. Uh, group activities. There's so many things that now we are deprived. People are, are uh, you know, uh, running away from each other. I am not saying that we should all attend uh, group activities. Actually, I, I encourage people to stay home, to stay away from, from uh, outside and outside uh, stimuli as much as possible due to the fact that, yes, this is a real threat. This is a real uh, situation that we're dealing with. But whenever we're feeling this fear and this hopelessness, um, our, the chemistry of our brain changes, our body changes. We, we feel differently. We feel as if we are, um, you know, we are trapped and our back is to the wall. All I'm saying is that you are powerful. You're able to take care of yourself. You're able to take care of your loved ones. I want you to get up and, and exercise your right, your right to this incredible, vibrant, and, and, and uh, unlimited energy, and this health that is your, you know, basically it's our birthright. So there are methods that we can do this. It's not just by wishing or by, you know, desiring this. You have to really put your shoulder to the wheel and become active and, uh, and hold the reins in your hand. So first thing is that we need to look after what we eat. You need to watch your food. Believe me, I've said it a million times. I've, I will say it millions more, but food is a medicine. Food has two uh, jobs to do in our body. It's either to heal you or to hurt you. There is no kind of food that just sits there innocently or benignly. Food is designed to heal you or to hurt you. So you have to choose wisely. Not only the food that you're choosing, one of the things that we discussed with Dr. Naram was actually, was this, this incredible power of fasting. Fasting is very powerful. You know, our bodies were designed millenniums ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, way before the time that we had access to food as we do right now. We didn't have trucks to deliver food to us. We didn't have, uh, uh, you know, farms that they, they uh, yield all these incredible uh, amounts of food. We didn't have supermarkets. We had the nature. Mother Nature bestowed upon us this beautiful local and seasonal food, meaning that what we could gather, what we could have access to, and what we could, we could actually hide and, and preserve for the winter time. So what, what, this is not winter time in, in uh, New York where I live. So basically what it is that you will, you will have uh, a lot of uh, dark leafy vegetables, green leafy vegetables, 
you will have a lot of root vegetables you would have a tremendous uh, delicious wonderful seeds and nuts and things that they hold throughout the the year so you can consume it i am absolutely uh, motivated and i am planning to uh, have the next video be about uh, some recipes i would like to share that with you i would like to start sharing the kinds of food that dr naram liked and kinds of good food that dr naram sometimes cheated you know i don't believe in cheating with food but you know i know that it's not possible but certain things you can still stretch a little bit and have some fun without really breaking the whole regimen so that we will get to a little bit later now let us discuss what dr naram and i discussed during our phone conversation about uh this uh, coronavirus first of all coronavirus is not going to to uh, uh catch you by just breathing the same air you have to have someone's saliva uh, inside your body meaning if someone um, you know you're sharing food they take a bite of a sandwich and then you take the next bite so make sure that you always wash your hands because you know I was at the supermarket the other day and I wanted to hold the shopping cart and I'm normally you know I'm not very finicky but I just said that I don't know who has touched this so you can sterilize that but you can most importantly is that you wash your hands with soap I, I truly believe in soap a lot more than sterilizers these alcohol uh, sterilizers I really really truly encourage you to just wash your hands with soap and that will do the job uh, do not touch your face do not touch your eyes any entrance to the body so it should be avoided but we have to live our lives and we cannot constantly be vigilant and you know alert about these things so what do we do this is a story about your immune system this has nothing to do with uh, the outside. Your inside, when you have these walls build up, when you're strong, when, you're, when you can fend off anything coming at you, when you can um, boost your immune system, honestly, this is your best bet because we cannot change the environment. We have very little um, you know, influence over what's floating around, what is coming from what country, what is happening on the outside. But we have 100%, 100% um, possibility and, and, and control over what goes on inside of our body. So stay away from the food that your body cannot digest. Or for digestion of those certain foods, your body needs so much energy that your immune system gets uh, compromised. So no dairy products. Dairy products create a tremendous amount of mucus. That is what the body it creates blockages in the body and that what is it creates an environment a, a fantastic environment for germs to live so make sure that you do not have uh, any dairy products by any dairy products I mean the dairy products the milk that you put in your chai uh, and in your tea in your coffee please do not there are so many different alternatives to that you can have oat milk you can have cashew milk you can have almond milk you can have rice milk anything you have so many different choices i do not recommend uh, um, soy milk but other than that there's so many different milks that you can either buy or you can make at home so stay away from that butter cheese yogurt buttermilk all of that because when i tell some of you that this is not allowed you just say should i could i have some paneer paneer is made from made from uh, dairy products the story is about the, the the proteins that exist in milk we are not able to digest them and we will talk about that some other time i've spoken about that many many times so let us uh, put all the dairy products aside and only dairy product that you can use is ghee and the ghee that we make the way that we we make it to become medicinal ghee and that medicinal ghee of course is uh, boiling the the butter very slowly over uh, 9 to 12 hours so we will send you this recipe we will send you all the specifications so you do not uh, end up with something that is not edible and you waste your your uh, butter 
Next thing is, please stay away from all gluten. Bread, anything, cakes and cookies and those fun things that people eat, any thickeners that has used wheat, uh, please stay away from those. Of course, in this category, there is wheat, there is rye, and there is also uh, barley and some ancient, uh, some ancient grains such as kamut and, and so uh, that einkorn that we need to stay away from. I have a list for you and we will talk about that when we discuss the recipes. But stay from anything that has gluten in it. And I just want to mention something. Being eating gluten-free and from the, the stuff that is outside, um, it's not often the healthiest thing because a lot of gluten-free products that they're selling in supermarkets, they have fillers and they have additives and they have things that to, to make it taste good or make it taste more like a wheat product. We will give you recipes and you can also, there's so many different types of food that um, innately, that inherently they are gluten-free and you do not need to, you know, do somersaults to change uh, all these ingredients to make it taste like wheat or something uh, of that sort. Now, um, another, I recommend highly, another ingredient that I always say, please stay away from is added sugar. Added sugar is, is truly one of the biggest enemies that we have. Please stay away from added sugar, processed food that has so much sugar, lots of, lots of salt, and uh, just, just stay away from those things. Cook your food at home. It's easier than having to end up in a hospital. People say, I don't have time. I don't have time to cook. Now we have so many different uh, tools to cook fast and easy and deliciously that the matter of time is actually taken care of. But I always think that, you know, when people say that to me, I don't say it, but this thought goes through my head. And I say that if you don't have time to cook, how can you manage time when you're sick, when you're stuck, when you're in a hospital, when you are sitting there waiting for hours for one test after another test, for one doctor visit, going to another specialist. Think long-term, not short-term. You're worth it. You should take time and, and create these wonderful recipes for yourself. Easy peasy, it's not so difficult. So another thing that I would like you to stay away from is again, all the nightshades, such as tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants. You know, I, I love all of these myself, but unfortunately, whenever I eat them, I start bloating, I start getting getting sick, I start getting, uh, you know, uh, a little sicker than, than I like to be. So if you're eating once in a while, you know, a little bit of, uh, let's say, tomatoes, if it's raw tomatoes, although we say no, no raw, raw food, raw tomatoes are less acidic. Peel the skin off, take the seeds out, then you can have the flesh. That's a little bit easier to digest and it doesn't affect you so much. We'll talk about this again in length at another time. So um, let, us, uh, let us now take care of the things that, you know, that I discussed with Dr. Nero. So he said he talked about fasting. Fasting is one of the most important tools that we have in order to guarantee your body's health and vibrancy. We're, we're not designed to eat three times a day and then have snacks in the middle of that and then go back and forth and constantly nushing on something. So it's best that you eat about six hours a day. I know that they say eight hours a day because a day is 24 hours, so they divide it into into three sections, one, uh, you know, section we, we sleep, one we fast, and one section we, we eat. But I prefer six hours to eight hours. You can choose what you want and, and stick to that. So your body anticipates getting the, the food at, around that time and also uh, prepares for digestion. So please make sure that you fast. The second thing that Dr. Naram has uh, did, did discuss with me let me see it's the home remedy the home remedy that i will discuss with you now let me read off so i do not make any mistakes so he said two teaspoons of coconut oil or ghee coconut oil for people who are 
uh, definitely vegan and they do not take any animal product. We prefer ghee, so please choose what you want, but two teaspoons of that oil, half a teaspoon of black pepper. We use uh, peppercorns and we grind it freshly because the oils that, that the oil that exists in the peppercorns remains fresh and, and uh, just uh, very new. And half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Choose an organic, good quality turmeric powder. And we will have a half a teaspoon juice of holy basil, tulsi. If you do not have holy basil that is fresh, that you can, you can squeeze and get the juice of it. So we, we strongly suggest that to use an organic uh, powder form about one quarter of a teaspoon. So we have one teaspoon of ginger juice as well, fresh ginger, squeeze it. Sometimes I just grind it and grate it and then squeeze it and I, and I get about uh, one teaspoon of, of that. You put this all in a half a glass of water and you enjoy it. You can enjoy this once a day on empty stomach when you wake up in the morning or you can have it two, three times or four times a day. It's totally up to you. You need to make that decision. When you hold something in your hand, that, that food, those ingredients, they talk to you. They let you know that, yes, this is something that, that I welcome into my body. Or no, stay away from, from me. Don't, don't bring this in. If you think one time is okay, then do one time. If you feel like, no, you need more of this, then go ahead and do so. Then we have the, the remedy to improve your immune your immunity. We have many formulas that they help with the immune system. This is very important that, that you, you should uh, boost your immune system. But this is the, the home remedy that Dr. Naram has suggested. Two teaspoons of fennel powder. You can have fennel seeds and grind them uh, at the time that you're using. I always like that much better than powder. So grind uh, the fennel seeds into two teaspoons of powder and one teaspoon of cumin seeds. Again, grind them and have uh, one teaspoon of that. You can mix this with a little bit of water, hot water, let it bloom a little bit, let it sit till it's uh, room temperature and you take two to six times a day. Then Dr. Naram uh, knew about the panic, the panic that a lot of people would experience. So he always had a, a, a home remedy for this, which was two to three teaspoons of ghee, or again, you can have sesame oil, almond oil, coconut oil, and one pinch of cinnamon, one pinch of cinnamon. So now I have told you remedies, uh, home remedies, that they involve a lot of ghee. And if you follow all of that, some of you might say, oh, this is too much ghee for me in one day. If you prepare the ghee the way that we have recommended, that medicinal ghee, believe me, it has this characteristics, this attribute of balancing vata, pitta, and kapha, and is perfect for you, even people with high cholesterol. If they do it the way that we have said, believe me, the cholesterol not only would not go up, it would actually drop. And we have evidence of that. So uh, a Shanka Mudra was recommended by Dr. Naram. The Shanka Mudra is, is uh, for, for when we have high panic and high anxiety. It really helps. I've seen it help many people i've seen it in front of my face that you know someone who was just like panicking and hyperventilating that by doing the shanka mudra they calm down and actually their pulse changed and so this is about let me see if i can show you i'm going to move around and uh, bring my hand up right hand you open it like this and you put your left thumb in the middle of your palm bring your fingers down and wrap the wrap the thumb um, so, so your fingers are not touching the palm of your hand, your right hand. So you bring the fingers of your left hand up to touch the thumb of the right, and you will open and close six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is how it works. If you did not catch this correctly, you can always contact our office and they will definitely, definitely will send you uh, the uh, description of this marma. It is so wonderful. I have seen it happen in, in such situations that I didn't think it would, but it did also for myself. So 
the formulas that I wanted to discuss with you, please uh, be mindful that we do not have much of these left. We have had because of the season of, of uh, respiratory problems and cough and cold was upon us. And uh, aside from this coronavirus, we also have other respiratory challenges. We have the flu, we have the, you know, the, the cough and cold and different forms of that. So if you would like to have these, please be mindful that we, we have very few uh, for each family so you can share together. And uh, so it's one is Swas Shakti. Swas Shakti is for the entire respiratory system. It brings the inflammation down. And uh, you know that when when uh, the respiratory system is is tight and the and the uh, passages are are very um, you know narrowed, the mucus does not go through and it doesn't flush. So we need we need to use swas shakti. You can take two in the morning, two in the afternoon. But for people who already are feeling some cough and cold, I strongly suggest to have two. Uh, tablets maybe three times or even four times a day. Then another formula is called Kaffee Yog. Kaffee Yog is for the mucus that builds up in the in the uh, cavities of the sinus, in the nape of the neck, in in the whole entire uh, you know throat, and and uh, it's really damaging and it's uh, it it hurts the ears. It could bring infection. It could you know and the eyes get blurry and so Kaffee Yog is for that for that purpose. So you can take two in the morning, two in the afternoon. And as it was with Swas Shakti, you may go ahead and repeat this three or four times a day. No side effects, no negative effects, nothing. It will actually bring you uh, a lot of health. Uh, then we have Amrut Yog. Amrut Yog is a foundation uh, formula. It means that it helps with the respiratory system. And on top of that, because we have a lot of post-nasal drips and it drips into the, into the digestive system and creates a blockage in the, in the digestive system by covering the Agni. Um, root yoga helps with this. And any, what we call uh, arm, but the reaction that this arm creates in the body that is uh, a lot of histamine and it actually reduces that. It's really a fabulous, fantastic formula. I love it so very much. Then you can have one in the morning, one in the afternoon, but you can again repeat these dosages three to four times a day. We also have uh, we also have something that is that brings uh, energy boost and and boost your immune system. That is called Jawara Shanti. Jawara Shanti not only brings the uh, immune system to a, to a higher level, but also deals with any fever. You know we do not want to. We do not want to reduce fever in a way that uh, that the body does not have the tools that it needs to to uh, kill the germs. Because let me tell you something: fever is absolutely the body's reaction and the body's way to kill any invaders. When the body experiences fever, then what happens is that the body creates this oven, this heat to actually burn all the germs, the, the virus, and, and what that, that are causing the fever. But we also have to be mindful that we should not have fever burn our organs and create a heat in the body that is damaging to, to our organs and our system. So Jawara Shanti balances that, balances that heat and redirects this heat uh, to, to actually deal with the with the virus, with the disease, with the illness, with the condition, rather than um, damaging our our system. So, um, Jawara Shanti, you can take again one in the morning, one in the afternoon, or you can take two and two. I sometimes, you know, I take sometimes up to nine tablets or twelve tablets per day, depending on my, you know, when I have to be in touch with many people and sit in front of many people. Then we always boost this this whole. Um, uh, conglomeration of, of, of uh, uh, herbs that I just mentioned. For people who have a lot of problems with their lungs, they can also take healthy lungs formula and uh, repeat that also either twice a day or three or four times a day. Um, fever is very important to manage. Please, when someone has fever, Dr. Naram used to say, if you can handle fever, you can handle anything used to say a doctor who doesn't know how to handle fever 
is not a doctor. A healer knows that when someone is suffering from fever, they completely cut off food, absolutely no food. Please do not worry. Nobody's going to starve. Actually, body then, then starts, uh, starts digesting and burning the excess mucus, and you will get energy from that. One thing that you, you can drink during feverish time or give to your children, and I repeat again, absolutely no food, especially when people give milk and dairy products. They say, okay, you cannot eat, then at least have a glass of milk. That is just disastrous, absolutely disastrous. Do not feed your children anything, especially no dairy, no gluten, nothing. You can have some mung water, make some mung soup and add some extra water to it and they can drink that but better than that is if you take about two three cups of water add one tablespoon of edge wine powder edge wine powder and uh, and then add about you know either fresh ginger or or dry ginger you can add as much as you want and then you will see that it comes to a boil you make a tea out of this i normally add about two, three inches or about maybe half a cup or one cup of, uh, uh, half a cup actually grated, uh, grated fresh ginger or crushed ginger. And I make this tea and you can sip through this tea throughout the day. It is amazing. It's really helpful. So I think I have said what I needed to say. If you would like to contact uh, our office or if you need to talk to me, I know that uh, I just found out that through uh, it's Facebook. You can send me messages and I will actually respond to those messages. Please forgive me. I am going to get to that in, in a day and I will respond to all of you. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Health is freedom. Health is the only thing that we have that will support our life in the best way possible. May God uh, take care of all of us. May Dr. Naram's, uh, I guess, uh, protection be with us and he's looking down from the heavens and he loves you and he's with all of us god bless you and namaskar